We've already covered PUC. IOU is the investor-owned utility that's different from the munis and co-ops. It's a for-profit business. Uh, then co-op, we've already covered that. It's it's those are mostly rural. There, there, there's a legal uh, a cooperative and that ties into the Department of Agriculture's finance structure. Um, and most of the state laws allow this. It's basically an owner owned entity where the members are self-financing, but typically those are rural. Uh, but so but who are they regulated and, by? Are they regulated by the Department of Agriculture at the federal level? They're, they're, some of mine think they are, but they're really not. At retail, it's it's a state law question whether they're regulated or not. Hmm. The state law might say we're going to let them self-regulate if all they're doing is managing their electric bill because it's not for profit. The costs are going to flow through. There's no shareholders. So some states under their state law authority to regulate retail have said, you guys can regulate yourself. And the same is true with me, not uh, with munis. Uh, so even though the, the state has regulatory authority, it might not choose to exercise that regulatory authority. So that comes and, out of the state legislature, not necessarily yes. out of the Public Utility Commission. Yes. Okay. That's a state legislature decision, okay. whether they give the, the Utility Commission that authority. Of course, the Utility Commission is also a, a creation of the legislature as well. Right. And the alternative is for the, the legislature to set the rate each session. Now, you know, they'd right. love that if they had to vote on what the electric rates were. And so they set up the commissions, you know, not only for their technical expertise, but also uh, a layer of political insulation uh, from what are difficult decisions, because when costs go up, uh, rates go up. <laughs> and, and everyone runs among for cover. Our rate payers. Um, you have residential, then C and I is commercial and industrial. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the variability of load drives the cost. And in the summer, a lot of the variability of load is air conditioning. And the, re the reason why variability of load uh, drives costs is it because when you're trying to meet your summer peak, if the summer peak is a big flat line, it's pretty easy to figure out how much generation you need. But if it's peaky, if it goes up and down, the, the generation costs money 365 days a year, and you mm -hmm. might only use it six or eight days. It's who pays for that surplus. And the industrial customers have large flat loads. Like think of a, of a factory that's running all the time. Their bill is going to go up in the summer because of air conditioning, but because it has a huge base of usage to run the factory, it goes up a little bit where your home, it might go up, you know, 100%. And it's that variability that drives the cost. So the reason we have residential, commercial, industrial is because their load profiles are different and there's always debates and rate cases about cost causation, who who caused the cost, who should be assigned the cost, and their loads have different uh, characteristics, and that drives that debate. 